Welcome to Four Downs. As usual, Andrew Beaton, Chris Cusack, Danny Nolan here to give you the latest on Duke football. Two division leaders clashing in Tallahassee, and the divide between the two teams could not have been more clear. Yeah, I think there's not a whole lot to talk about detail-wise from this game. Florida State really dominated in all three phases of the game. After the game, head coach David Cutcliffe said that Florida State was the best team in the country. Oh. I'm going to interrupt you there. Do you actually think Florida State is the best team in the country? No. No, it's ACC okay. homerism okay. at its finest. I think Alabama is a much better team than Florida State. But he does have a point that Florida State is the strongest team across the board in the conference. They've really shown how much of a divide there is between the top tier of the ACC and even a much improved team like the Blue Devils. And when you look at that game, it's important to remember Duke just got beaten by a better team. Duke actually played smart football. They didn't turn the ball over once, and they collected four turnovers from the Seminoles. So it's not as if they got out coached or they made sloppy mistakes. They were beaten by a better team, so that's something they can take with them going forward. And now this weekend in Durham, they face the Clemson Tigers, uh, arguably the second best team in the ACC. Is it going to be that much different playing Clemson rather than Florida State? Well, the one thing to know about the Tigers is, is that their offense is potent. They scored 37 points when they played Florida State early in the year. They have two dynamic weapons on the at wide receiver. They have Sammy Watkins on one side, DeAndre Hopkins on the other. Watkins is maybe the most dynamic talent in the ACC, but Hopkins has 10 touchdowns on the year. Then they have Andre Ellington in the backfield and Taj Boyd running the whole show. It's a dangerous unit to try and contend with. I think the only positive Duke can take heading into this game is that it's at home. And really, Duke's three big losses on the year at Virginia Tech, at Stanford, and at Florida State have been uh, in these road games where they've really looked outmatched. And I think because Duke has shown, like the game against North Carolina, that it can play better against teams at home, I think Duke has a chance. But that's probably the only positive they can take going into this. And also a point I don't think is being made enough is that the bye week is right after that, a very late bye week for Duke. Having a small margin, even if it's a loss against Clemson in Durham, I think does wonders as far as confidence for this team, especially when they have to play Georgia Tech and Miami, perhaps still qualifying for the ACC championship game. Having said that, you still have to make predictions. Playing Clemson in Durham this weekend, what do you see the score being? You know, I see a 38-21 to 21 Clemson win. I think because of the uncertainty of Sean Renfrey, who suffered a concussion in the game against Florida State, I just think there's too much uh, uncertainty there for Duke to win this game. I, t I see the Tigers taking it 41-38. I think Duke is going to be able to find its groove offensively. A lot of it, as you said, depends on run free, but the Tiger weapons on offense are just too much to handle for this Duke defense. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a lot of points. I think it's going to be 42-31. to Run free, even if he's not there, Boone can come in. Obviously, he showed that he could throw four touchdowns early in the season. Uh, I don't see them winning the game, though, and that's okay. They still have two more games to still qualify for the ACC championship game. That's going to do it for Four Downs. Once again, for Andrew Beaton and Chris Cusack, I'm Danny Nolan. Thanks a lot for watching.